Hi, this is Ariel. Bonjour. Do you like the decoration? <laughs> Spend the morning on it. <laughs> Welcome to my channel where we make... Non, du coup. Today we are, I am, celebrating 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> and I thought I would do some sort of question answers because I do get a lot of questions on my channel and I struggle to answer all the comments because, because when there's more than 10, I'm just completely freaked out. <laughs> So I asked you guys if you had any questions on YouTube and on Instagram and I thought I would answer them. Et ça plante. So many questions were how did I learn sewing and crafting and all this stuff, like a lot. I had a really basic training with my mom when she gave me a sewing machine when I was 16. I did a few stuff that were eh, all the basics like patterning. I learned in fashion school. I went to a fashion school in Paris for two years, like learning how to work for ready to wear collections, even though I really don't like ready to wear. <laughs> but for the second year, I specialize in stage costumes, where the most important thing I learned is that it taught me to open my mind and just absorb everything, every technique, every costume, every fashion, every object, and try to find a way to make it work for stage. It was just one year, but it was pretty fun. So I would say that 20% of all I know it comes from fashion school. That's like the base that I built on. 80% comes from the internet. Really a lot of YouTube and blogs and... Pinterest, Pinterest, and just trying everything that I see and failing and do it again and try to incorporate it in all the knowledge library of costume making. So yeah, I had a good base in fashion school, even though I don't like fashion. I had also questions about my life path, I guess. So quickly, after high school, I went to university. I studied physics. I have a degree in physics. Don't really know why. I started working in a laboratory where I was super unhappy and, and if I wanted to stay in that field I would have had to get an extra degree which I probably wouldn't have had uh, succeeded in. So I decided I wanted to travel the world but I didn't have any money. So I found a job working as a flight attendant for Emirates. Alors là, je suis à la Grande Muraille de Chine. Et pour monter, il y a des petits remontements, mais pour descendre, on prend un toboggan. So I would live in Dubai in a company apartment, but I really hated living in Dubai. Mm, not for me. So I came back to France. I went to fashion school. After fashion school, I worked for two years in a haunted house, <laughs> which was really a great job. I had so much fun there. I met so many people, but also I was getting tired of living in Paris. So I moved to the south of France, where I live now in Montpellier, which is the best city in the world, obviously. Not <laughs> really, it's really nice. And I was working mostly as a decorator, making sets for events or companies. A lot of submarines. Since I had a lot of questions about this, during the pandemic, like everyone, I started a YouTube channel. And now it is successful enough that I can say this is my full-time job. And I love, love it, because I've always loved making videos, even though they were awful, but still liked it. And I can make plenty of stupid projects and people enjoy it, apparently. So what's more to ask? <laughs> what is the costume you are most proud of? I would say that I'm really proud of everything that I finished, even though two weeks later I completely forget about them. But I would say that the prettiest, I think, is my aerial costume. Probably because my name is Ariel, but also the dress is really nice. It looks like this. Uh, maybe I should take it out of the closet sometimes to show you, but... Uh... <laughs> and usually I'm also super, super in love of the things that I can make without buying anything, like making the most of what I have on hand. Qu'est-ce que tu aimes dans la création de costumes ou de vêtements? What do you like in the costume creation process? Problem solving. Whether it's a time crunch, whether it's I don't have enough fabric, I don't have enough space. I kind of like to have constraint because I think that it's where you can express the most creativity by trying to think a little outside of the box. I like this kind of challenge. But if you didn't have any worry... No. But if you didn't... No. But if you didn't have to worry about money or space, what costume would you make? On the pretty side, this Mugler dress, which is the Chimera. It's my favorite dress in the world. It has scales, it has glass, it has hair, it has feather, it has 10 different types of fabric. I love it, maybe one day. And on the not pretty side, I would love to make a mecha, like a giant robot where you can get inside and it's working. <laughs> so I guess some kind of costume slash vehicle. That would be pretty cool. Sexy. What was your first costume project? This. 
which was basically a tube with marker and lipstick because I didn't know how to make sleeves. It was really bad, but uh, good enough for the situation. Where do the finished costume live? Let me show you. Welcome to the guest room. It's not the prettiest, but it's where I store all the costumes. I can store the big props over there and there I can store uh, guests. <laughs> I use the plastic that came from my couch to protect them from the dust. This big thing is the skirt from Cinderella. We have some armor on the top with boxes of masks, the leather stuff here. I store my crinoline on the door. In all of these boxes I have a lot of costume stuff, like accessories. And in there we have the rest of the costumes. There's also more stuff on the top. This one is only bum rolls and corsets. And the broken sewing machine that I need to fix or sell. So soft. Do you get your ideas? Mostly the internet, I watch everything. I watch too much YouTube, but I watch movies, TV shows, I play video games. I spend a very unhealthy amount of time on Pinterest. It's like you don't really need to invent new things all the time, you just have to put your own spin on something that exists. I think I'm like a sponge. <laughs> I don't know, that's how I work. Do you have any tips for sewing without patterns or dress foam for that matter? Yes, bed sheets and mock-ups. I don't think you need patterns when you have clothes. There's plenty of videos about this on YouTube, but you can like copy your clothes and make your own patterns based on those clothes, which is really nice because those clothes, they probably fit you already. So you can copy the base and then you make mock-ups. So if you don't have a dress form, it's okay because you can try your mock-up and you make alterations based on the fits and all the designs that you can add. And then you make another mock-up and then you make another mock-up. I know it's not exciting to make mock-ups, but every time I ask myself, mm, should I do a mock-up and I don't do it, I always regret it. Buy old bed sheets from thrift stores. Mock-ups, mock-ups. As another human with a crippling anxiety, how did you manage to put yourself out there on YouTube? I've always wanted to, but I've never had the courage. Also, salut, j'habite en France et je parle français, même si je suis américaine. Ton anglais est top, mais si jamais tu as des questions et que tu n'es pas sûr, je suis là si tu veux. Thank you. It took me two years to finally upload my first video. And I think for most people, it is the hardest video to put out there. Hi, my name is Ariel. And it's going to be not great, but that's okay. I think I'm just starting to make something and finishing it and even if you don't publish it, I think it is the hardest step, but once you get in, it gets slowly easier. I'm not there yet, but I'm so much more comfortable now than I was one year ago. And also I started in English, which is not my mother language, and somehow it felt less personal than speaking in French. That is why you have to endure my accent, but also it really helped me to make that first step. I don't know if that helps anyone, but for me that was a big thing. How do you keep from burnout? How do you get yourself out of it? I burn out so easily. I haven't had a burned out yet. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Most of the things we do, they don't matter that much. I don't know everyone's situations, of course, but for me, it is letting go of some parts that I that are too stressful for me, like answering all the comments. When I decided to just answer five comments or five emails, it really lifted the weight of my shoulders. And also decided not to post a video if I don't have one. I was like, I have to do three videos a month. And yes, it would be great for the algorithm if I had two videos a week, five posts on Instagram, TikTok, emails. So I guess cutting out the things that are weighting the most on your shoulder, is it that important? Nothing matters, we're all going to die anyways. So. <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified to give advice. <laughs> I also had a few questions about LARP. So yeah, I do LARPs like usually three, four times a year. It is so much fun, highly recommend. I prefer the ones that are lighthearted and are fantasy and adventure. I usually like to play ambience-like characters, not the deep emotional things or things that are modern. I want fantasy. 
Try it one day if you can. That's so much fun. I love your videos and your costumes are amazing. Stop. Do you sell them? No, I don't sell anything. I don't take commissions. I'm just doing things for the fun of it. It may be a bit personal, do you have a life partner or spouse and are they into cosplay too? Or These photos are psychedelic, I was an early teenager in the psychedelic 60s. I see. <laughs> I do have a partner, he's wonderful. We do LARP together but not the other costume parts. Sometimes he helps film the reveal of my videos. Any words of wisdom? Eat more vegetables and go to therapy. We all need it. What would your ideal creative space look like? Having two workshops like this. One for the clean stuff and one for the dirty stuff. I mean, like paint or chemicals. Comment ça va? Ça va. Caches-tu des petits détails que tu es la seule à connaître dans tes créations? Do you hide any secret details in your creations? I would say my DNA. <laughs> one time I was embroidering something and I <laughs> drooled on it. But a lot of time I've cut or pricked myself with pins. So there is blood on most of my creations. <laughs> How much time do you spend editing versus making for an episode? Editing takes me between two to five days, most of the time three. And for making, I guess the shortest was three days and sometimes weeks of work. So it depends. Did you think that doing YouTube would be your career previously? What were your career plans? It's been three months, so I don't think that's much of a career. <laughs> But I didn't really have plans, I thought I would just die at 40. Any tips for upcoming WCS competitors? Yes, for any costume contest that you are on stage, I highly recommend to think about the audience. Think of someone who doesn't know what you are doing. Try to make sure that they're having some fun too. You are making a show, try to give us a show. And also when you're doing your makeup and your facial expressions, do it for the last row to make sure that everyone sees your face. Make it over the top, make it impressive. Okay, we have some controversial questions. Ton fromage préféré, en grosse française que tu es. <laughs> Love the phrasing. <laughs> What's your favorite cheese? Okay, now we're talking. The best one ever is Saint Nectaire. There shall be no debate about this. A close second is Comté. But I love all the cheeses. Favorite croissant topping? What is croissant topping? Qu'est-ce que vous faites à ces pauvres croissants? C'est pas des sandwichs. <sighs> what is a small thing that brings you joy? My partner's... What camera equipment do you use? I have the Sony ZV-1, which is like a very good camera for a small camera. You cannot even change the lenses. Maybe one day I can get an actual DSLR. But this one looks fine. Best flight attendant story. There weren't a lot of crazy things happening to me, but something that I really liked to do was scaring people into putting their seatbelt on. <laughs> Seatbelts are really important in a plane. They don't have the same use as in a car if there is a plane crash. Of course, the seatbelt cannot change anything, but crashes, they never happen. What does happen a lot is turbulence, and it can get pretty rough. It's not uncommon that the plane will just drop, and it can drop pretty high, so everything inside will go pfft, drop in the ceiling, and then pfft, crash down, including you, and then you will get injured, and the plane will have to make an emergency landing in an airport just to send everyone to the hospital. When there is so much turbulence that the flight crew also had to sit down and put their seatbelt, I would try to put my best acting face on, and I would try to act like I was really, really scared, but pretending that everything was okay. <laughs> like strapping myself on the verge of crying like <laughs> and all the people who saw me were like slowly putting their seatbelt on <laughs> looking a bit concerned i really like doing that <laughs> is your full name azariel what does it mean uh, i used this 10 years ago i was i was trying to find some wordplay with my real name ariel it was like hazard Ariel, not great, but I just put it in anyway. And I never changed it, even though I don't really like it. But I think I'm stuck with it now. I had a brilliant idea last year, but it was already taken. But imagine, creme French. Wow. But that's already taken. So no, I think I'm stuck with this now. What is a skill not related to costuming that you would love to learn? Forging. That sounds super fun. <laughs> and there is fire. If you could do a project or collaboration with anyone on YouTube, who would it be? I love so many people. I think Morgan Donner. She makes really beautiful costumes, but also she's really artistic about it, with, a, with kind of a punk side. I think she's really cool. 
So in total, I got 345 questions, so I can't answer all of them, sorry. But I really want to thank you for subscribing to this channel. I really love being a creator here. A triple thank you for the people who support me financially on Patreon and here on the channel that you can join. I really want to keep bringing you all the stupid stuff that I build and hope that you will keep enjoying it. Have a great day and a happy Halloween! Bye!